Hello everyone, Longfam here. Uh, today, custom shapes in Photoshop for illustration and design. Uh, it's uh, something I came across uh, around four years ago from Sparth. Uh, he was talking about how he, he used uh, custom shapes to do concept art. And it's something that didn't really exist before and uh, recently you know, after a few years of, of thinking about it, I recently had the time to to play with it and have fun with it. And I think it's a great way uh, to make pictures and to create design and uh, to find interesting shapes. So uh, let me show you. Okay, so that's the uh, original post from Sparth on uh, CA.org. Uh, he shows you how he started these pictures these beautiful pictures that he made uh, based on this, this little technique of using custom shapes uh, to your advantage in Photoshop. So I'm gonna basically explain the process in the in this video and first show you maybe the, the basic like what it looks like in Photoshop is this have yeah, those little shapes is vector based so you can um, can distort it and always retain the quality of the edge. That's basically one of the main advantages of this of this thing is the is this vector based. Uh, but as you can see, the basic the default Photoshop yeah, shapes that you have uh, with the program may not be really interesting on the, from the illustration you know design sort of view is really basic stuff and but you know has its use uh, but yeah let me show you how to create a shape that is uh, a bit more interesting a bit more complicated maybe has uh, interesting stuff in it that we can use to create a picture the way you make a custom shape is with a path that describes uh, your shape uh, so, like here, uh, I'll create a quick one with the uh, the pen tool, and if you go into into the path window here, uh, and it's selected, you can go into edit, and then define custom shape. I'll have a little window pop up, and uh, we can call it. Well, let's you know keep it shape one, and you're done. So now you have your your new shape. So let's get rid of that and show you what we have. It's the shape we just created from this path. So you can see how simple it is to create one of these. And the way I use it and the way uh, Spark used it is uh, to extract this shape from a photo. So let me show you how to do that. A few examples of uh, of what I did with with this little technique with these uh, this tool, and you get really interesting. Results. I'll show you that later. Uh, let me show you first how to create how to create one from a photo. So uh, you're after a path, like we just said, and you can create path from a path from a selection normal selection, pixel selection like this one. So basically what I would do is go into channels and because I'm after selection I'm trying to push the contrast of the image to get uh, a good sort of pixel amount and a clean uh, clean edges and clean you know uh, masses. So let's see if I can find a, a good one here. Um, basically, I'm looking for the contrast. You know, let's say let's say the blue channel works. It doesn't matter that much, but okay. You are after a selection, so what you're gonna try to do is push the contrast of the image towards uh, basically keeping only two values in the, in the image by using the levels adjustment if you push this little slide here it's gonna clip the white and this one's gonna clip the blacks 
or darks. And let's see. You know, so I, can, I can choose basically the look of my final shape. And this this may be interesting, may may not be, you know. Uh, let's see. Okay. So now if I do select color range and I select one of these two um, areas of white or black. I can have a selection, so you can see here in white is the selection, and that would be um, the base for our new custom shape that we're creating. You can select the, the white areas, and here you can see also different, basically the negative space of, of this, this previous shape. Um, I don't think it's very interesting, so let's, let's do it with another one. Do it again, so you, you understand the process a little bit better. Uh, again, I'm looking for clean selection, so I'm, I'm trying to, in advance, maybe think of what areas, what shapes of shadow and light could I use as an interesting custom shape. So, if let's say, for example, I wanted this cock, sort of cockpit from this uh, mechanical vehicle here, uh, I could, I could you know select the blue channel because it has a, a nice contrast and I could easily select these white parts here if I yeah if I want this one in the in the foreground maybe more interesting to take this use the red channel for that but you know uh, you have to experiment with it and see see what works for you on the you know per image basically uh, you know yeah, I'm, I'm clipping all these values from black to gray here in the middle. I'm clipping all these values to black, and it allows me to get an easy way uh, to get an easy selection after that. So if I do this, and then select the range of uh, white, basically, okay, push a little bit. Here I have a selection, and let's say, oops, and let's say. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this selection. I will clean it up a little bit with the lasso tool and uh, intersect the second selection I'm doing right now with the first one. So I'll get only this area selected in white. Now that I have a selection, uh, we need a path, remember? So I'll go into path and click this little button am I gonna have a pop-up it should say uh, create a path from a selection that's what I'm gonna do now I have a, a path based on a, a vector path based on a pixel selection that I had from the color range selection and here we go we can uh, edit define custom shape done so let's try it out now see if it works like we want it select the tool select the shape that we just created and then if you click and drag you can then place place the shape uh, there's different modes that you can use with this tool uh, the default one I think is shape and this one is, is pretty annoying to me because every time you put down a shape like this it will create a shape layer and uh, I don't know about you guys but I really don't know how it works and it, it has no uh, it's not useful to me to have that at all um, so what I would do I mean See, like you, you can create a shape layer, you can create a path layer, so it will create another path in here. But that's not really useful to create pictures. So I usually use uh, the pixel mode. The pixel mode means that if you create a new layer, uh, you'll just you know drop down pixels on this layer, and it will be like if you were brushing, for example, or painting, or drawing. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's how you do it. Okay, how do you use this thing? Um, I'll show you a few a few ways that I use it personally. I'm sure there's a lot of ways that you can use this thing. And I think personally it's a lot of fun. 
uh, so that's why I, I really had to make this this little video so here uh, here's a picture I made uh, quite some time ago now it's like the first uh, way I found uh, direct use of the shape basically create an interesting silhouette with it with a few different shapes that I, I combine and uh, I basically create the silhouette of the sort of you know that's a spaceship or overcraft aircraft something boat I don't even know uh, it's sort of a futuristic object and it's based on the shapes I used for this as mostly industrial industrial machines vehicles stuff like that uh, to get that sort of you know industrial look that I really enjoy but you can use it with anything you can use it with uh, nature uh, you know organic shapes like you know I don't know trees and mountains and basically anything that you can extract from a photo nature trees rocks whatever sky you know uh, cloud shapes and textures and you name it I mean anything that comes out of a photo you can use or any kind of selection you do on your own uh, you could paint something and then select it make a path out of it make a shape reuse it you know make a piece of design maybe for architecture I've seen I've seen a lot of people do that um, but yeah well, that's an example uh, it's pretty simple just a just quick sketch and it I mean seriously it's really quick to make these I make one pass uh, black black sort of silhouette outline of this object and then I go in with a clipping mask a clipping path on top of this silhouette and I use the white um, I use a white collar and you know do a second pass basically over over this and I, you can get really interesting stuff out of that that's one um, here's another one same thing it's direct use of the shape I just put it down and then uh, you know select the layer I mean uh, lock the transparency of the layer and go over it on a second pass with a lighter value for example and then um, something I really enjoy doing these days is generating compositions out of an abstract mess of shapes and uh, so let me show you uh, I recorded a quick video earlier doing this exact thing and it's something I posted an article on my my website uh, last month um, where I explained the process basically but let me show you there's a lot of value I think it's something I heard some time ago I don't know I don't know who was the guy that talked about it but then I heard it again on Scott Robertson's channel and I'll put the link again to, to his channel so you can you can check his actual explanation for that and the basic idea is abstraction you, you create a lot of abstract details on a plate on a picture and then you go in and try to find interesting compositions inside of that and let me show you it's uh, it's been done using custom brushes um, first and uh, you know I came, I came I mean I was I was in this I was in this uh, custom shade thing I was kind of obsessing about it and I remember this technique and I, I thought you know I could use it with uh, the shapes because you get so much detail out of it and it's so clean uh, so just let's see let's see what it does and what I do is I use three values um, simple very I keep it try to keep it very simple three values light middle dark um, I add a little, little bit of color here just just for the video to be a little bit more interesting but uh, yeah what I do is I create a big plate it's it's 5k pixels right now and I create a big plate with it and I put down the shapes randomly kind of randomly using those three values uh, now the middle middle value dark value and a lighter value and it will serve in the picture as a foreground middle ground and background and 
you know that's usually the way you create an environment and you create a sense of scale and depth uh, using you know a sort of a, you differentiate the values like that and the, and the planes in the picture like that using value so yeah so that's what I'm doing here uh, basically I'm, I'm not really concerned about the look of it I'm just creating something really abstract and later I'm gonna go in and crop do a little crop you'll see it happen in a few seconds yeah here we go okay with a mask I create a little you know a little area inside of this big mess and then zoom in and try to find stuff in it try to you know like when you look at clouds and you you find like faces or you know objects in there uh, works the same way uh, your brain is so tuned and your brain is so used to seeing patterns that it works it works really 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 well and here I found you know something that I thought was maybe was interesting so I'll just copy it paste it on a new document and then I go around the picture just go around the picture try to find something something interesting and uh, because I use mostly um, you know those sort of technical industrial mechanical shapes it's gonna be mostly um, it's gonna look industrial it's gonna look man-made and that's what I'm looking for right now uh, but you can use it in a different way again this is not really this is my way of doing it there's no there's no real uh, way of doing it I think it's just uh, create an abstraction and then try to find something in it that's interesting to you so here again uh, I think most of these are gonna look like cityscapes you know futuristic sci-fi cityscapes with buildings and uh, huge you know structures hanging out and you know stuff like that hanging you know hanging structures things like that and uh, I'm using a pretty big crop right now. I don't think it's working too too well um, because there's so much stuff. It's a bit messy. Uh, but later I'll crop in a little bit more and tight, you know, uh, tighten up the crop and uh, and zoom in a little bit, and you'll see I'll I'll be able to find a lot of interesting things in there uh, to me. And I'm sure you can see stuff already. Uh, you know, this little window sort of looking out into a that's what I see, you know, it's a huge city, it's a huge uh, sort of, you know, it's awesome, futuristic, whatever, with flying spaceships and shit. So here you go, yeah, I tightened the crop a little bit, uh, that allows me to go in a little bit more and, and, and see more stuff, I think, uh, I think there's a, basically, it's just that the result's gonna be simpler, and I think she can get a simple really simple statement in there uh, will work out and I'll show you how I used it um, I think uh, to to good effect I think uh, earlier and a few pieces of mine a few personal stuff that I did so see like it's really abstract I'm sure uh, sure you see stuff in it and it doesn't uh, doesn't look like that in my mind or in your mind. <laughs> it's sure it's completely different, but I I can see stuff in there, and that's I think that's the beauty of of this kind of approach, going into the the chaos and trying to find order in there. And it's very easy, and you you'll notice your brain will see stuff, and it's just it's just amazing. Okay. Again, another one, you know, I, I found like uh, 10 little comps in there. And right now the count is at, you know, I must be around like 10 minutes in doing this thing. It, yeah, it's, uh, the video is sped up, uh, sped up 50%. So it's at, a, at 150% speed. It's not really a lot faster than the normal, but uh, just to make it a little bit less boring. Uh, yeah, but you can see it's super fast. You get a lot of a lot of information in there, and that's 
you know, in a in a world in a world where everything needs to be fast, I think it's a great way of doing things. In a great way of playing and I just I just find it really uh, relaxing to do that because you don't have you just let your brain wander in there in the abstract and and find interesting things I see there's a spaceship there I can see it uh, I don't know if you can but <laughs> I see it and this is strange see like all these uh, interlocking shapes and there's I don't know I'll, I'll keep playing with this this technique a lot it's pretty new to me um I've been playing with it for around I would say a month or two uh, and uh, seriously uh, you know I can't stop doing it and look at that you take uh, half an hour a day if you have a good sort of library of shapes uh, and like I showed you, it's really easy to make those yourself. Uh, you take your picture and you just, you know, create one after the other, and then you combine them together, and uh, by separating separating the values like that, uh, you can get a lot of variety and a lot of information in there. And uh, right now, yeah, I, you know, I I went around the whole canvas, and uh, I just I wanted to do more, so. I just rotated the the, the picture uh, 90 degrees, and now it's it's sort of you know it was horizontal, it's now vertical, and and then you can go go in again and and find more stuff. Uh, sometimes what I do is I duplicate the layer like I did, but I I use a sort of blending layer. Uh, I use the blending modes of the layer, and maybe you know put it on overlay or darken or lighten or soft light or something like that, and it will add more info. Um, in the picture and you'll see more stuff so yeah I think it's a good I think it's a nice interesting uh, and fun uh, way of doing things still going around you know just going around like looking through this little window into a uh, huge, that's how I see it, so it's a huge city. And I think I'm repeating myself a lot. Uh, CD, I, I didn't save that, that, that one was good, I don't know. <laughs> And the cool thing is, because uh, <clears throat> it's hard to draw, it's hard to uh, always come up with different, or something new, something original, especially in composition. Uh, you know, you you can follow the rules and you know make make a picture look attractive and all that. Uh, but sometimes, you know, after a while, uh, it's hard to find new ways of you know using the space of the of the canvas and uh, I think it's also a good way doing that kind of using that kind of approach you find something different you will stumble upon something that looks cool and then, yeah you will find something that, that looks good to your eye and that's gonna be completely different than what you do usually so yeah I think I'm almost done. I don't know how many I've, I found in there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, 23, uh, 24, maybe. Little, little, little interesting uh, small pictures in there. Sort of sketches that I could take and then refine. Yeah, when you have those uh, done, uh, here's, a, here's an example. Of, of early uh, explorations with this um, you can see I added like a soft uh, atmospheric glow uh, in the picture it helps uh, sometimes it helps you know understanding the space and it, you know it gives a sense of scale um, so yeah the you know this is again like all that must have been half an hour exploration maybe and it 
is very messy, uh, but I think, uh, I really think there's a lot of interesting things here that I could, I could take and confidently, you know, uh, push to another level and take to finish. Uh, so here's a few examples of the sketches that I did with this. Uh, this one, for example, uh, came out of, oh, let me zoom in, uh, came out of, of this one. You'll see it's really, really messy, uh, abstract thing. It doesn't really make sense, but you can, you know, you can apply uh, design sense to that and, you know, make it, create a space out of that. Uh, and yeah, I, th I think, I think the sketch looks better than, than this, but, you know, I think it's a good example. But here's another maybe using a different style, trying to get rid of of the original. Um, you know, the original is, because it's, it comes from custom shapes, is really hard edge. Uh, there's a lot of contrast, and uh, it, it may not suit the, the picture. So again, I think the sketch looks much better than what I came up with, but uh, as you can see, it, it can give you ideas. It can, uh, it can push you in a direction that you would not have taken otherwise. Let me zoom in a little bit. Out of that, out of a really complicated, uh, messy. But you can see, you know, I can, I can already see like there's a there's a robot there. Uh, there's some. Uh, I thought maybe it could be some sort of flying vehicle on a on a sort of a landing pad in a futuristic land uh, but yeah then <laughs> it's completely different than, than what I what I imagined in the beginning but that's what happens uh, usually and yeah this is uh, today's uh, exploration and you can see there's uh, 23 different little ideas that I could take and, and play with Yeah, this one could be, uh, for example, could be, uh, you know, cityscape, um, a building there, another building here, you know, structures in the foreground. Uh, you know, same this one, another sort of cityscape. That's a, <laughs> that's a spaceship I was talking about. This little this little guy here coming out of the hangar. Like that, I don't know. I'm sure it's just something completely different, but uh, yeah, that's how it goes with this kind of a this kind of a thing. So yeah, I, I really encourage you to to check this out, to make your own uh, make your own shapes, you know, play with it, uh, take some photos outside, or use some uh, use some some of your library photos that you already have, and uh, extract things out of that, and make some pictures. So everyone, uh, thanks for watching. You can find me at my website, uh, longfam.net, and uh, I'll see you later.